I want to share the story of India's first private rocket launch and the learnings from it. So right in 2018, I was working as a scientist at ISRO. And as we have seen, like nobody who joins ISRO ever steps out of ISRO, they only retire out of ISRO. But then I just completed six years at ISRO at that point of time. And then I realized that after learning more about the industry, I, I realized that India needs a very, very strong public space sector, which we already have in the form of ISRO, and also needs a very strong private enterprise, which was missing. And in fact, I always wanted to build a company right from my school and college days. And I thought, like, why not I build the private company, which can take India to the next orbit. And, and we need many, many such companies at that point of time. But when I looked out in 2018, I realized that there is no policy. You know, you can build a rocket, we can never launch a rocket because uh, there is no policy which is backing it up. And in 2018, there is no funding environment for a space startup in India. Just imagine going to an investor in 2018 and asking them that, you know, we want money for launching a rocket to space and we want to build a business out of it. You know, people would laugh at it. And that was the scenario. There was no precedence of any kind of funding happening in the space sector in 2018. And there was no talent in the private sector. In fact, most of the talent was in the government sector. And you need to need to actually build these complex space systems. You need extraordinary talent to be built. And looking at it, all odds were actually against building a successful rocket company. But still, there is some raw confidence in me which said that this is something which is very important to be done. And it needs to be done. And it made me take that leap of faith and take the plunge of starting Skyroot in 2018, along with my friend and co-founder, uh, Bharat. And uh, we started the journey. And then we started going to investors. And we started pitching the idea. And as you know, like you, know, you can expect the reaction when you go and say that you want to build a rocket company and show the big dreams. Naturally, most of the people laughed at it. But still, one, one visionary investor invested in us, Mr. Mukesh Bansal, based out of Bengaluru, one of the leading entrepreneurs in the country. He believed in our vision invested the first initial seed money in our company, and then we started the journey. We started designing the rocket. We started uh, completing all the hardware. We started testing, et cetera, et cetera. One year passed, two years passed, and then there is no sign of policy. And all our money is getting over, and we are, all our attempts to raise for the money have failed, and we are unable to. It's getting more and more difficult to raise a capital. And then uh, COVID hit. You know, as you know, like the wor whole world came to a stall, and it is probably one of the lowest moments in our journey where you have to stick together and persist at that point of time because there's literally no resources for us to move forward. And then we, that's what we have done. We have persisted and persisted. We stuck together as a team and uh, you know, used every iota of resource we had and, kept, and kept, kept pushing and pushing the boundaries of what we could do. And then as we persisted one fine day, an announcement came. India's open up the sector to private players, and which has been a landmark transformational journey after the beginning of ISRO in 1960s. I think that was a big, big moment for us because government recognized that India needs strong private enterprise and then opened up the sector to the private players. And we became the first beneficiaries of it by signing the first MOU with ISRO to access their test facilities and launch facilities. After that, we raised a couple of smaller rounds. And then, uh, and then most of the people said, most of the industry veterans said, you could raise smaller funds, maybe you could raise 100 crores, but it's very, very difficult to raise several hundreds of crores. It's very difficult to grow beyond, to raise growth capital in the country. But still, we broke the glass ceiling and raised India's largest ever round in the private sector. We raised over 400 crores. And in fact, we accumulated more than 500 crores in investments in just a matter of two years. Also, again, proving the potential of India's private sector to the world. And then, just starting with just two people in 2018, we never knew you know, how, how, how the world would take us to. And then uh, now we are a wonderful team of 280 people. And then this is a team, you know, we persisted for a few years. And then the day has come where we are able to assemble our first rocket. And this is the day, just the day before launch. We have persisted for years and years. And then, in fact, this was the day where uh, you know, we have spent almost like weeks before this just readying the rocket at Sri Harikota, which is the spaceport of India. And then, and literally most of the first attempts at rocket launches failed in the world. And then I was getting more nervous as the day of the launch is approaching. And then in no time, the day of the launch has come and the time of the launch has come. And let's all experience the, those few initial moments of this launch now.
Well, that proprietary space, and uh, it started a new historic era in the Indian space sector, becoming the first private company to actually be able to launch a rocket to space. And this was hailed as a historic moment for India and a very proud moment for India. And in fact, in the international media called it as a, a event which thrusts deeper uh, India into the future of the space, uh, space ambitions. And then I think that was a phenomenal success and the entire team with a median, of, median age of just 28 years was just celebrated across the country for weeks together after this successful launch with everybody watching live across the world. And I think this is one of the phenomenal events which happened in the Indian space sector. And then the journey started. And this proves that, uh, in, in, and also like this mission was done at a fraction of cost compared to anybody else in the world. And also one of the rarest missions where the first attempt at launch has succeeded. And then uh, if you look back at the entire journey, it actually proves that if we are able to start with nothing and come this far and launch a rocket to space, and that proves that nothing is impossible when you actually take that big, bold step to start and persist until you achieve your goals. And then, and now we have launched a rocket to space, and in fact, we named that mission as Mission Praram because uh, we knew that even though it's a big event in the space sector, but it's just the beginning for us, and it's a very humble beginning for us, and it was just called Mission Praram, and then we have done a launch, we've done a successful launch, so what next? So we're building a much bigger rocket, which is seven-story building tall, called Vikram 1, which is in the final leg of manufacturing. It'll be launching in the upcoming months, and then as we go further, we'll be doing more and more launches with time, and we want to create a future where, you know, booking a rocket becomes as easy as booking a cab, and then also, also push the boundaries even beyond that and to build the spaceships of the future where all of you probably can go for a holiday in space. You can go from one continent to other continent within just 30 minutes using a rocket. And in fact, you can transform the entire world by giving connectivity directly from space. 50% of the world population can get direct connectivity, high-speed broadband enabled by space-based services. And I think the future is very exciting and you can even go beyond that, you cut the chain of gravity and expand beyond Earth to use the energy and resources of the solar system. Today we are bound by Earth because we don't have regular rockets, low-cost rockets going to space regularly. But once this happens, the whole universe belongs to us. And in fact, the universe has so much resources, so much of water to sustain trillions of human beings which Earth cannot sustain. Already we, today we are spoiling Earth, and Earth cannot take beyond a particular limit of population. And I think the next frontier is to go to space, and these regular launches to space using low-cost futuristic rockets is the way to open up this new frontier for humanity. And, uh, and it just takes 10 minutes for a rocket to go from Earth to space, while every time I land in Bangalore, it takes me two hours to get into the city. And that means space is super close, and our mission is to make it open for all. Open for all. Thank you.